Welcome aboard, everybody. This is Wednesday Night Basketball of the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan joined by Greg Anthony, Steve Smith, and on the sideline, David Aldridge. Well, it was the Indiana Pacers winning their last game again. And it was one of those games where it was just hard to get anything going. And you could see frustrations emerge. But hey, a win is a win. Sometimes you're not going to play your best. So you have to just gut it out, right? Here are the starters for Montreal. Ilya Sova out there with Jang. Then it's Green. And it's Dinwiddie in at the one. Here's Dinwiddie. Pacers with the rebound. Fast break. Here comes Indiana. Here's McConnell. That's good. And it's Levert with the assist. Well, fans can be impatient, Greg, especially for the fans of teams that are slow to start a season. And Kevin, the media as well. Right, I mean, right. I played in New York, and you, you know, in that town, you go big or you get talked about. No doubt about it. But. With the way things have evolved now, and every team is a national team because every game's televised, uh, it's starting to happen more in some of those smaller markets as well. It's just a harsh reality of pro sports. Here's Poole. Green passes to Dinwiddie. And Ilyasova kicks to Dinwiddie. Passes to Poole. And he converts the layup. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Wow, that's a defensive breakdown. Can't do that against good scores. Now, here's McConnell. Outside Warren. And it's good for two. And we're already seeing a little rhythm out of this offense. They've hit three out of four so far. Here's Poole. Misses the three. And here are the Pacers now. Outside Warren. Down low. And it's Turner finishing it off. Throwing it down on that one. Turner really showing off that athleticism. Here's Green. And good. And it takes a nice bounce off the right iron and down. And it's McConnell with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Pacers. Pass to Warren. Beyond the arc. It's hauled in by Ilya Sova. Defensively, it's hard to account for everything. They gambled off him, and it worked. Cool, no good. Last game for Montreal. They picked up the W against Cleveland. And it's Levert missing. And he's frustrated. That's a shot he can make in his sleep. Shot on the wing, and the jumper is good. Timeout, timeout. Poole's got his second bucket tonight. So the Pacers Start. call timeout their first of the game. So an entirely new group in now for Indiana. Doug McDermott, he's checked in for Sabonis. Lamb comes in for Warren. Brogdon, he's checked in for Karis LeVert. And Aaron Holiday is subbed in for T.J. McConnell. Now here is Holiday. Lamb knocks down the three ball. And he likes to get in a rhythm early. Nice triple. And it's Rondo with the ball for Montreal. Trailing by two. And that one's good by Roby. Holiday with it. And it's slammed in by Holiday. And he just elevates and powers in the one hand. Mm -hmm. Textbook. Outside Jackson. Three pointer. Outside Rondo. Out of bounds. Indiana takes possession. Careless turnover. You lose focus for even a moment in this league. That's the result. Just under three and a half minutes gone here in the first quarter. Off the left rim and out. And so it's Montreal now. Here's Brissett. Brooks outside. Takes the three. Drills the three-pointer. You can run these plays for Brooks. He's improving in the catch-and-shoot area. 
Todd then against Jackson. And Turner kicks to Holiday. That ball. Nice feed that time from Turner. Six changes of the lead here. Yeah, both teams still kind of feeling their way through this game. Jackson from long range. Wow, huge buzzer beater. I did not think he was going to get that off in time. One eye on the rim, one eye on the shot clock, ending the quarter the right way. And getting going again here in the second quarter. Fairly close game so far. And from what you've seen from Montreal, uh, guys, what do you think? Uh, well, they've been aggressive from the beginning, particularly on the offensive end. And that has helped them build an advantage here, playing with good focus and good energy. And now brought to you by Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset our lineups. On the court right now for the Pacers, we've got Miles Turner, Jeremy Lamb out there with McDermott. Then there's Malcolm Brogdon, and it's Holiday in at the one spot. Offensive rebound, outside for Jackson. Three-pointer, and another three for Montreal. Yeah, these defenders had better start closing down on shooters. Brogdon against Jackson. Brogdon outside. Outside Holiday. Down to five on the shot clock. Launches a three. And the Pacers another three. Both teams running perimeter-oriented plays that are working. How often do we see this these days? Clubs answering each other from range. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Pacers will take it. And for a look at how the competition stacks up right now. These, the new power rankings, they tell a great story. You look at the Nuggets. They couldn't hold their position this week, but remain in the top ten. You know, right now for Montreal, give them credit. They've stuck to their plan here early on. Playing their brand of basketball, they're showing everyone they have the potential to be even better. And the Pacers call time here. I know you appreciate this, Greg. So much of defense now is closing out on the three-point shooting and then protecting the rim. Consequently, pull-up jump shooters are super valuable. And there are a lot of good ones in the NBA right now. No doubt about it. And, and Kevin, you know, you think about a few guys. James Harden, I mean, he shoots that step-back three, but he's a guy that, because of his ability uh, to utilize your inability to defend that three-pointer, uh, Kyrie, Dame Lillard, those are some guys. Chris Paul still as good as anybody in that mid-range area. C.J. McCollum. These are guys that have really feasted and, and carved out a nice niche for themselves in the NBA because of that ability to take and make jump shots. Man, I love that list. You're right on it. We're now about two minutes into the second quarter. The drive by Green misses in close. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. Warren's gone one of three from the field here. The three. Montreal again missing. And a fast break now for the Pacers. Good job of stepping up to the plate there, seizing back the momentum for his team. That's the competitor in him. Close game. Let me have this one. Got that one up quick. We're just over two and a half minutes into the second quarter. McConnell passes to Sabonis. McConnell kicks to Holiday. Ball's knocked loose. And here comes the break. Let's it go from deep. And out of bounds as the Pacers gain possession. Let's check out the Western Conference standings right now that we're here in the new year. You take a look at Montreal. Right there in fifth position. Middle of the pack in the conference. And I think for Montreal, most of the preseason predictions were right on the money when it came to them. I mean, a playoff contender, but not necessarily championship caliber. I agree. As good as they've been, they do seem like they're missing that true killer instinct that sets the great teams apart from the good ones. Here's Dinwiddie after the basket by Sabonis. Yep, it counts. Huge hole in the defense, that possession. He didn't waste any time cutting through it. And so it's McConnell with it. He'll bring it up for the Pacers. 
And the wide open shot from Warren. Good. And McConnell gets the assist. McConnell's got four assists now tonight. From deep, Ilyasova cranes the three pointer. Ilyasova's got the game tied up here for Montreal. How can you leave this guy that wide open? Please. That's terrible. Warren, good. They're consistently finding ways to get the ball inside and taking full advantage. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Inside. Ilyasova hits the bucket. Ilyasova's got seven. And, and he has really come to life here after a slow start in that first quarter. Dinwiddie against Levert. Here's Warren. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. It just has a knack for finding openings in the defense. You could describe Warren as opportunistic. And he knocks down the first one. Both free throws good from Warren. Here is Rondo. Shoots over Brogdon. And some good action through the first two quarters as we reach halftime. Indiana out in front. They lead by two. And will be. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey again, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson. Shaq is here. Kenny's here. You're watching the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. For the Pacers, the first quarter was pretty even. Some good moments from both teams, but as the... That's all for now. And as we get into this third quarter, as we've seen so far, neither team able to create much separation on the scoreboard yet. We've seen T.J. Warren really having a great game. Well, we'll find out if they were able to find an, an answer for him over the break. He was scoring with ease in that first half. I think both sides probably adjusted a few things. The key for him is to bring the same level of energy over these last two quarters. On the court right now for Montreal, Gorgie Dang is out there with Ilyasova. And it's Green, and it's Dinwiddie in at the point. Here's Warren. Sabonis trying to get open. Warren, good. He's got 11. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Here's Dinwiddie. And another three for Montreal. Yeah, the D with very little pressure on their perimeter shooters. Three of the last five baskets they've allowed have been from beyond. McConnell finds Warren. And a minute played as the second half gets going. Count that one. Warren's got 13 points. And of the last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is just smash mouth physical basketball, guys. And he didn't punish them for the weak coverage there, but they can't count on him to continue missing. Lavert's gone only one of five shooting from the floor, and they're moving it up. Here's Poole. Good on the triple. Poole's got the lead up to three now for Montreal. Their ability, again, to stretch the floor, particularly in this second half. This was obviously a focal point coming out of the break. Look smart when the shots are going down. Timeout called the Pacers. Ray, can you really compare players from completely different eras? I mean, people love to talk about the greatest of all time. You know, Kev, some players do transcend eras. There is no doubt about that. Wilt's a great example. And there are many others, but but in reality, to your point, the style and the way in which the game was played was so different uh, that it isn't fair. I mean, all you can be is the best of your generation or one of the best, and I, I think that should stand no matter what the conversation is. Like, there's no doubt in your mind Oscar Robertson could play in this era as well as he played when he played. No doubt. Bill Russell, all those guys. Yes, truly yes. great ones. So much of your ability to perform at a high level is built around your confidence and your belief in your abilities. And those guys had it as much as anybody who's ever played the game. Brooks with the bucket. The ability to finish with either hand makes Brooks a dangerous score around the bucket. And where Brooks seemed to have carved out a niche GA, his consistency from range and from the line. 
Kev, if you can space the floor and hit your free throws, you're going to be in the rotation. Brooks really came into his own last season. And the more he refines his shot selection, the more valuable he becomes to this team. And first time out of the game called for Montreal. Some changes for Indiana. McDermott's checked in for Miles Turner. Lamb comes in for T.J. Warren. And Brogdon subbed in for Lavert. Now here's Rondo. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Dinwiddie kicks to Rondo. No good on the triple. Pacers trail by three. Here we go with Holiday running it up the court. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. And now a look at the upcoming schedule for Montreal. On Friday, then on Sunday, they'll head back home to host the Indiana Pacers. Greg, good to see Jeremy Lamb back on the floor after his injury. He can still be a productive wing, you think, off the bench for this team. No doubt about it. More of a finisher for this team. Lamb shouldn't have any lingering effects of coming off that ACL. His game's diverse enough to get shots anywhere in the half court, and he'll continue to be a productive player for the foreseeable future. Rondo, the teardrop falls in, and Montreal leads by three. And that gentle release on Rondo's floater, when he's making these shots, the D is in trouble. Holiday against Rondo. And the rejection by Jang. Rondo passes to Dinwiddie. And it's good coming on the assist by Rajan Rondo. And now a five-point Montreal lead. And so it's Brogdon with it. He brings it up for the Pacers. Nice shot by McDermott. A primary responsibility of Brogdon's. When someone is open on his squad, he gets it to him. Brooks outside. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. For Montreal, they have gone one for one, making their previous attempt at the line. And that one falls for Brooks. You know, one of those second round picks who looks like he'll be in this league a long time. That's Dylan Brooks. The Pacers making a switch here. Holiday's checked in. And then for Montreal, Brissett's checked in. And it's Jackson in for Dinwiddie. And slam dunk by Lamb. And those plays can make a difference in a game like this. <laughs> well, you know it's going to fire up, Greg, everybody on that bench. This is a close-knit group. They feed off one another's energy. Definitely got to use the clock here and get the last shot. But you know, this is where your patience is tested. If you shoot too quickly, you give your opponent a chance to close out the quarter. Underrated as an athlete. Brogdon's speed helps him get to where he wants to be. And guys, the D has to show a little more fight on the interior than they did on that trip. And it's good, but hold on. The officials may want to look at that one on the replay monitor. And not so fast. The officials are going to check that shot again and make sure they got it right before we go to the fourth. Yeah, and at this point of the game, you know, some might say, hey, can, can't we just skip the replay this time around? But you just never know. And it looks like they got it right this time. No basket. The clock had expired while the ball was still in his hands. Yeah, and even if they don't show it, I know the refs are proud of themselves after a replay proves them right. They're like, see, we had it right all along. So good call, fellas. We've got more NBA basketball coming your way in just a minute. And it's been a very competitive game so far as we get rolling here in quarter number four. Pacers trail by five. We've got Jeremy Lamb. T.J. McConnell is out there with Malcolm Brogdon. Then it's McDermott. And it's Sabonis in at the center filling out the middle. So that's the group out there for Indiana. McConnell's gone one of three shooting so far. Tries it from nine. That shot off the mark, and it's the Pacers taking it the other way. The shot by Brogdon wide open. Brooks grabs the board. Yeah, he's kicking himself. No defenders to be found in that mid-range area. And Poole gets it to go. 
Poole's got the lead up to eight now for Montreal. He might not have the long range ability of some other guys, but he will knock down open ones like that. Indiana moving the ball away. And that one's good, Brogdon. Matching baskets from the perimeter, an earmark of today's game. Hey, players love competition, and the fans love it as well. Oh, he just punches that one down with a fury. And he rubs it in a little deeper with the hanging finish. Timeout called the Pacers. And as fans and broadcasters, we're not permitted to hear the specifics in these huddles. No, we're left to infer from the adjustments we see on the floor. Some changes for Indiana. Miles Turner, he's checked in for McDermott. T.J. Warren comes in for Lamb. And Karis Levert subbed in for Malcolm Brogdon. Green, he's checked in for Montreal. Okay, well, let's go down to David Aldridge for a report from the sideline. Hi, Kevin. Well, the head coach of the Pacers talked to his team during a timeout and said he just wants them to play faster. It feels like they've been too lackadaisical with the ball and that their aggressiveness just isn't there right now. Kevin, back to you. All right, thank you, David. Final quarter here, and we're just over a minute and a half through it. That one's good, and the Montreal lead is cut down to five there thanks to the basket from McConnell. A solid passer at his position. Levert excels at finding his teammates when they're open. And coming down the stretch here, both teams still on fire. Yes, and if you love offense, you're loving this matchup. It's been a highlight reel affair. Here's Levert. Tries it again, and Turner finishes inside. Putting on the hard hat there. Give Turner credit for staying locked in on capitalizing no matter what. Shots good by Green. Attacking the defense with the pass. Don't need to be a hero. And here's Levert. He kicks to Turner. Green against Warren. Now Green. One thirty left here in the fourth quarter. Brissett passes to Poole. They kick it out to Green. And another three for Montreal. A tremendous floor spacer. Danny Green has that sniper's mentality. Here's Levert. And he comes up with the deuce. Time out, time out. Some guys just understand how to generate points. He's one of them. Montreal calls timeout. They're leading by eight. We've got 113 left in the fourth quarter. And now let's present our new balanced player of the game. And in terms of his shooting, this has been one of the more accurate performances you'll ever see. I mean, he's been in constant motion, creating a lot of good looks for himself. But, but still, even when you're wide open, you expect to miss some of the time. And that has not been the case here tonight. This guy has made everything. If he could only contribute like this for them every night, you can't overstate how much better it makes this team when he has a game like this. And on the road, no less. Pass to Poole from downtown. Gets the three-pointer to fall. And, and we'll just watch the clock wind down, guys, in what will turn out to be a win here for Montreal. And they had to battle for this win. There were times when it looked like it was maybe slipping away a bit, but they never let that happen, which I thought was a real credit to them. And, and that's a product of their mental toughness. Anytime the floor of the game turned against them, instead of caving, they just dialed it up a notch and were able to pull away. And it'll advance their win total up to 12 on the season. And so they'll take the first game of the season series, a team they'll only see twice. They're certainly happy to start it off with a win. That's the pass you want. Orchestrating the offense, creating for others. And here's Montreal. And now they decide to foul intentionally. He hits the first one, and that makes it a seven-point lead. So he gets them both, and it's an eight-point game. Timeout called the Pacers. They're behind by eight. 23 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. What do you think, guys? Licking their wounds. It hasn't come together for them tonight. They are left picking up the remains of their game plan. Better luck next time. McDermott kicks to Cook. Off target from three-point range. 
Dinwiddie wide open. And he's good on the three ball. Dinwiddie's got the lead up to 11 now for Montreal. Putting consistent pressure on this defense. Just the threat of him out there makes this offense work. Sky high, one of his advantages as an undersized four. Here's Poole. Drops it in. Taking no chances. They go on one last run to seal the deal. Not messing around at all. They were focused, relentless, 